From the City of Angels, you're listening to the James Salazar Media Podcast. On today's episode, headlines from the world of futurism. So let me strike the music and I'll meet you on the other side. Engage. What's up, savages? And welcome, my fellow Americans, to the James Salazar Media Podcast, where you get your monthly dose of <laughs> pop culture, politics, and futurism. Yes, uh, it's been a while since my uh, last uh, podcast. I've done three in a row. Uh, I decided in the second one to apologize for the length of delay uh, of a life circumstances. When they come in, they come in. In a way that, yeah, if you're not prepared, puts things on hold, unfortunately. But I digress. Um, today we're going to get into headlines from the world of futurism. It's a very interesting things to talk about today. Uh, but I wanted to talk about um, two things. A little bit of politics and a little bit of uh, pop culture. Uh, I saw Frozen too. Frozen 2 is uh, is the it's a good story. Uh it's pretty epic. Um as if you do not know where Frozen is, um it is uh a movie about these two sisters abandoned by their parents who died in a um boat crash or bo- a boat sinking in the sea and which it produced uh a song that was sung Millions of time by millions of girls called Let It Go. Let it go. Let it go. So, <laughs> I my daughter sang that every... I had to play that a million times in my car. Um, but here is number two. It's a, it's a unique story, for sure. It's not as good as the first one. The first the first one was pretty epic. And the songs were pretty epic. And the story was pretty epic. Which I just said twice. Uh, but the second one is not bad at all. It, it, it is a good story. It's a good continuation. It has moments of there that were brilliant. Uh, this, I, I initially said the songs were not as good. That's my first reaction. The songs were not as good as the first one. But you know, as I'm listening to them with my daughter and we're singing them, guess what? They're growing on me. And two, I think, are really good. Uh, I know for sure it doesn't have as many good hits as the first one. But there's there's definitely some hits in there. Um, there's some twists and turns. Um uh, couple of reveals in there um if i'm gonna give frozen which is a five star cartoon movie it it i mean it is it is the uh what do you call it? the cinderella the sleeping beauty of you know 2010s and up the, the, you know this this last decade of which we'll get five potatoes this is a four potato it's not as good as the first but but who but there are few very few movies that are better than the first so that, i mean that's not a critique let me see the godfather some people think godfather 2 is better than the uh the first one and the third one was no was not as good but i enjoyed it um aliens 2 definitely better than the first one the first one's not bad it's great and it has its own charm and um but second one was action-packed terminator 2 was definitely better than the first one um come to action and uh and storytelling the first one was pretty you know future future monster comes back to kill this girl you know that was basically it but the uh, where they went with it in the second one was was pretty awesome. So there have been uh, Empire Strikes Back is definitely better than the um, 
the first uh, uh, Star Wars. I mean, if you watch Star Wars, it's pretty, it's pretty short and um, to the point, and just like a, a moment in time. Um, but you know, in saying that, it it exploded the world. Um, yeah. Um, I don't know any other. Hey, if you want to put it in my Instagram or my Facebook or in what you thought was a better sequel than the first, um, yeah, put it up there. So, uh, Frozen 2, good songs. Two are very good. Um, Into the Unknown and um, the first right move the first right move uh what i think that's what it's called it's a, it's a brilliant song everybody every person should uh listen to that song when they're grieving <laughs> it's really good really ri- written well i think it's gonna have a lot of longevity but you know i was taken back by it it was really good so frozen to four potatoes Um, yeah, four potatoes. So I want to talk about, um, politics really quick before we head into, uh, headlines to the world of futurism. Um, it's about the impeachment hearing. Now, uh, the Democrats, the hearings didn't go as well as they thought. And, um, and I particularly... It's a lot of innuendos and um, half truth and uh, people implying stuff, which is not very good for impeachment. But they hear the thing: the Democrats, if they keep on going on with impeachment, they have to send it over to the Senate. Now, the Senate is run by Republicans, and when you give it to the Republicans in the Senate. Who, which in turn, give it to the president? Um, you are giving the Republicans the last say on this, which I do not think the Democrats want to do. They haven't proven their case yet for impeachment. Number one, and so they they are in a pickle, whether. And there's two mindsets that the Democrats have. That we, we've proven enough. Now we're going to send it over to the Republicans and have them veto it so, we, so they would be uh, in complicit with Donald Trump's nefarious dealings. Or they can say, if we hand this over to them, they're going to start investigating and calling their witnesses and probably things that we don't want to come out. And so it's probably best that we don't, that we uh, say, and this is why I think the narrative that I think this hurts the country, uh, it hurts, breaks my heart to try to impeach the president. It's, it's not a good thing because I think they're setting up the the storyline that uh, – we're going to do what's best for the country, and therefore we're not going to proceed with impeachment. And we're going to let the, the election aside since it's so close, which in fact they're going to do that because they don't want to give the Republicans the last word, nor do they have proof, enough proof to impeach him. There's not enough proof to impeach him. I'm not saying there's not enough proof that, that, that he did something wrong, but there's not, nowhere enough, uh, enough room to impeach him. So... They either, and here's their cards, number one. They either send it over and hope the American people, they did, the American people think they did a good enough job and the Republicans will have the last say. Or they keep these innuendos thrown out there and let the people decide. But ultimately, for the moderate... They're going to think that they didn't proceed with impeachment because they have nothing to impeach him on. And just like they had nothing to impeach him on on the, uh, 
on the Ukraine, uh, on the uh, the election scandals, all these things that they they said he did that didn't come to fruition. Once again, the Democrats are acting like it is a foregone conclusion that he was uh, a government. Sp- uh, a Russian government spy, a foregone conclusion that he did quick quo po, quick quo po, you know, you, you rub my hand, I rub your hand, whatever. You rub my back, I rub your back. Quick quo pro. I think I said it quick. Hopefully, I would say it. It, it would. It, it would suddenly be spoken right, but I don't think it happened. Quick quo pro. <laughs> quick quo pro. Quick quit quo. Pull. I don't even. I don't even know what the words I'm saying. I'm guessing at the words. It could be. I could be using all the wrong syllables for this stupid word. Okay. So I digress. So there's a predicament. So don't be surprised if suddenly this impeachment just falls out out by the Democrats because they don't want to give the Republicans the last word. And don't don't you fool yourself. They have the last word. They're gonna call up Joe Biden and his son, and and, and they're gonna call up all the pe- all the people who are suspected of uh, leaking. And there's gonna be a big old scandal right before. They're gonna paint the story that not only was Donald Trump not got negative press, but they have actively tried to do a coup against this administration. I shit you not. That's what they're gonna put, and they're gonna have that last say right before the election. So. Just wanted to mention that, cause it's just it's just ridiculous. It's not going to work unless you have a majority in both houses to impeach, unless you can, unless you can prove without a shadow of a doubt that red-handed, caught red-handed doing something. That where the other side, if they, uh. If they don't impeach their own president, they are complicit in rape, murder, or or stealing. You know that the, it looked too bad not to, to impeach the president, which is, the Republicans did when it came to Richard Nixon. He he did some shady shit, and they couldn't back him. You know, but that's not even close. These people say, oh, Watergate was worse. Uh, Donald Trump was worse than Watergate. No, it wasn't. You could prove Watergate. Couldn't, you can't prove what Donald Trump is. If they did, without a shadow of a doubt, there was a, here's a phone call where he said, hey, you better investigate these people or I am withholding government aid, government military funds and all that stuff if you don't do this. Then he would be busted. But that's not what it says. And that's not what was done. They didn't investigate. Nothing was held up. They received all their their funding. And it's not said in the transcript. It just says, you guys need to investigate corruption from the election. The one that they were all concerned about, that there was corruption about. It, it's not Donald Trump's fault that uh, Joe Biden has issues to deal with concerning Ukraine and his son. Just like it's nobody else's fault that Donald Trump has some issues that he has to face. The multitude of things that he has to face. It's his fault that he's involved in those things and it's Joe Biden's fault that he's involved in those things. Simple enough. You don't want shit to happen and you don't don't get into shit. I'm gonna put that on a t-shirt. If you don't want shit to happen to you, don't get into shit. So now headlines from the world of futurism. The first headline. Elon Musk comes out with his new truck. It's called the Cybertruck. That's cool, huh? Who likes a Cybertruck? It looks pretty awesome. It looks like the uh, DeLorean from Back to the Future if it was a truck. It's pretty cool. Um, 
<laughs> funny part of it is that, uh, you know, Elon Musk got too excited. He was throwing out uh, uh, some metal pebbles on rocks and, and these boulders to prove that his windows are pretty awesome. That if you ever went flying into them, that you would splat against them. Uh, <laughs> I guess. So he says, why don't you throw, it's like a bigger boulder. He says, why don't you throw that into the window? <laughs> and he, and uh, the guy's like, are you sure? He goes, yeah, sure. He throws it in it and it breaks the window. And I was like, uh. So Elon Musk starts to turn red. And then the guy, he's stupid. He says, well, maybe we should try the other, with, uh, the other window. <laughs> he goes, so, and uh, Elon Musk, and Elon Musk goes, are you sure? Are you, are you sure we should do that? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, it's probably a fluke that that happened to that window. And he throws it through the other one and it breaks the window again. So both of them are idiots at that moment. Should have stopped while you're ahead, but um, <laughs> what are you going to do? Uh, but overall, the thing looks pretty badass. And um, uh, it's called the Cybertruck. Um, it already has like almost 200,000 orders. Um, it looks pretty badass. It, it has more towing capacity. And this thing is fast as hell. And it's, it's, it can go off-roading. Um, all kinds of cool things. Um, you can go like, I think you can go like 500, 500 miles. So they increased the, uh, they increased what it can do. It starts at 39,000. It pulls over, uh, uh, 8,000 more than F-150. And um, the, I think the... Because uh, the, uh, the F-150 is coming out with... Uh, the Ford F-150 is coming out with their own electric truck. And... Um, so crazy. I'm pretty sure it's going to be fast as hell. And... Um, but that metal look, uh, I like to see these other looks for it. I don't want everybody driving a big old, that metal DeLorean look. But it's pretty badass. Um, the inside is pretty badass. You know. So, but that was the funny thing about it. And, um, yeah. Finally got the truck to come out. But they need something economical that's for like 20000 if they truly want to make a difference in our society and global warming and people's uh, carbon footprints, they need to come out with a car that's twenty thousand that has a uh, that is electric, that and should have a longer range than those their sports cars and their trucks, like five hundred miles, or maybe because the battery smaller. But this technology has to get better. I'm surprised. That the truck has a longer range than, than the current new Model S and X. Seems like a bigger chassis to hold. But I'm excited about what the world is going to bring concerning Cybertrucks. A killer deal and nobody's talking about it. Well, I'm talking about it. Spoo. But that guy's headline. Elon Musk. Yes, you will be able to buy a Tesla Cyber Quad ATV. Oh yeah, he had a he had a cyber he had a quad. So and and pulled it up in the back of the truck. So specifically made by Tesla. He's always going an extra mile. Whales are nature's solution. To climate change, if you want to hail or even re reverse, if you want to halt and even reverse global warming, you need to find 
a way to get more carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. And increasing the number of whales on Earth might be the option for a new International Monetary Fund report titled Nature Solution to Climate Change, Damn Car. Researchers did the math and found that a single whale absorbs an, an average of 33 tons of carbon dioxide over the course of its lifetime, trapping the carbon far away from the Earth's atmosphere when it dies and sinks to the bottom of the ocean. Nature has a billion, million years of, to, perf, to perfect her, what? Nature has it had a million of years to perfect her whale-based carbon sink technology. The author wrote, all we need to do is let the whales live. So all the carbon dioxide that the whale intakes in its lifetime comes up to 33 tons and it is when they dive, they sink to the bottom of the ocean. That's pretty much where they stay. And um, this is like, uh, what is it? That Star Trek movie, the suckiest one they ever had, where that big old tube of whale guts flying through the space looking for whales on Earth. <laughs> And they're going to destroy the earth because there's no whales on it. I mean, that's pretty, like, uh, that's pretty aggressive. <laughs> You're going to kill every other life form on earth because there's no whales. I mean, they, they don't just single out uh, humans. They're going after every other whale and every other uh, sea animal and, and, and land-bearing animal. Just because uh, there's no more whales, I guess we hunt them to extinction and therefore it's okay for an alien race to come and, and extinct us. I guess. Sounds like a liberal uh, logic. But I digress. And so, yeah. So, guess what? Japan, you're going to be the first one hit. You're going to be the first one hit. They're gonna they're gonna physically stop you if they think you're destroying if you're that the solution to fixing climate change is that is stopping you from having your sushi, okay? You're screwed. <laughs> so no more sushi for you. That's gonna be a problem. It's going to be a problem because they love them whales. They like carving them up. I mean, Greenpeace is going to definitely talk about this. So, yeah. Trash talking robots can hurt your delicate feelings. Not only can robots beat humans at games, it turns out it can effectively trash talk us during them too. Okay. For a new yet to be peer reviewed study, researchers at Cambridge Mellon University programmed a humanoid robot pepper to talk smack to humans while playing a strategic game against them. And despite the relatively tame nature of the bot's insult, it was still able to get it into the opponent's head and negatively affect their gameplay. Come on. I'm, I'm pretty sure this was done in college, right? Where, where they have literally ruined a generation of people that are so easily offended that they're not going to be any use in, in the workforce. But I will continue to read. As a part of the study, 40% of the completed against Pep, competed against Pepper in 35 games. Each of the guards and treasures, a game researcher used to study rationality. Sometimes the bot said, the bot said encouraging words to the opponent. At other times, 
it hit them with such a scathing insult as I have to say, you are a terrible player. And over the course of the game, your playing had become confused. The takeaway? The CMU team found that humans playing player performance better when the robot encouraged them, and worse, when it trash-talked them. Okay, so this is no news. It's not... This has nothing to do with a robot, but it has everything to do with humans. Humans are easily offended, very fragile, and they only thrive when they're doing good. Very few humans thrive in a competition where someone's trying to get into their head and making them feel good about losing. We see this. This is why there's very few people on the top when it comes to at, uh, 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 people who compete at things. You got to have a strong constitution. Your opinions and your abilities have to be stronger than people's opinions of them for you to compete at a high level. These people are feeling bad talking to a robot. So, there's some growing up to do there. <laughs> I mean, you don't, you don't need to have some high intellect artificial intelligence to insult humans and, and have humans feel bad. It's just, it is a rebuke on humans. It has nothing to do with robots, this article. I'm sorry to say. So. Elon Musk wants to add fold out solar wings to his Cybertruck during a Thursday evening event near SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California. Tesla CAO Elon Musk finally showed off his company's long awaited Cybertruck while. And while we're all still trying to digest the extremely polarizing design, Musk mine ha is already racing far ahead, imagining a bright and renewable energy fuel future with his much beloved truck in the middle of it. In Friday's tweet, Musk revealed the Cybertruck is getting an option to add a solar power that generates 15 miles per day, possibly more. And he didn't stop there. Added, adding the fold-out solar wings would generate 30 to 40 miles per day, he wrote. All right. A brand new truck design, arguably already a rational enough with or without solar, radical enough with or without solar panels, but the truck could possibly incorporate solar panels without much of a design departure. All right, why not? I mean, for people who live in rural areas, they, they just need to go around their farm. Do you have to go all the way out to one of those charging things? You just have your thing out all the time? In the morning, you know, go around the fence, mend the fence as that are broken. Just on the charge of the uh, solar cell. That makes sense. Nothing wrong with this. Nothing wrong with this. Next article, Someday Robots Artists May Have to Explain Their Creations to Us. Someday Artificial Intelligence Could Become So Advanced That It Gains the Ability to Think creati Creatively and Perhaps So Vastly Surpasses Human Artistic Abilities That It Would Have to Explain Its Creation to Our Squishy Primitive Brain. That's nice. So, it shit could be so deep. 
because it, it, it is accompanying all the parameters of the universe. To influence his art. And they go, this is why I did this. And we all go, whoa, that's deep. But if it ain't pleasing to the eye, to the eye I don't give a fuck how it came to the conclusion. If it's not pleasing to the eye, it's shit to me. I don't care if you're a robot or a human. Human. Or a human. Maybe. Unless, you know, I got to see something. But if it draws a squiggly line and it tells me some deep theoretical, mystical theory of why he draws that squiggly line, you know what it is to me? Just a squiggly line. And I could do the same without that influence. So if you're going to use deeper algorithms to be more creative, but you're going to do some, something pretty stupid or mundane, you better come up with something better than Rembrandt, Cap- Picasso, Michelangelo, Da Vinci. You better, come, you, better, you better come straight. It better be deep. It, it, it's it's gonna have it's gonna have more dimensions than less dimensions. For me to consider, even listening to something. But if it looks like mush, nine times out of ten, it's mush. All right. Horrible Christian app narks to your mom if you watch porn. <laughs> Evangelical Christians are enlisting AI into the holy war against pornography. Religion app like Covenant Eyes mm, act as sort of an AI-powered filter that not only blocks people from sneaking a quick glimpse at porn, but also shames them by flagging their activity and the report to their family and friends, according to Roll Call. The app is clearly built to further evangelical morals, and while it may be useful too for true believers or people trying to kick the habit, it's worth nothing just how bizarre it is to ask AI to keep an eye on you in case you slip up. Public accountability. While it may be hard to imagine a worse hell than sending your mom a push notification and a screenshot every time you watch smut, (laughs) similar tech could conceivably help kids steer clear of porn as they take their first step online. So here's the problem. Uh, That's how you got to use this. You're going to have a lot of women monitoring their husbands. And there's going to be people who have an addiction to it. You're going to have also kids. I don't know. I don't know what to feel about this. It, it, it seems it seems too. Um, first of all, let me learn, let me tell you a lesson. You see, the Bible says the Holy Spirit convicts. See, people can win a war against you, but they can't win a war against the Holy Spirit. There is a God, which I believe is. You, you don't want that situation that should be between them and God become a situation between you and them. If you can understand that. But if it's, but, you know, there's definitely a price to pay if you put it on yourself that if you look at porn, everybody gets notified, grandma gets notified and said, (laughs) I'm just notified. You you say, little Timmy, little bambino, Tim is looking at anal sex. So, you know, 
that would be a bad trip. <laughs> Whatever. We'll keep a close eye on this one. Protesters rain head mounted cameras scan 13,000 faces in DC. All right. Everybody's face is being scanned. Awesome. I'm going to go into that. AI just released the AI it said was too... AI, open AI just released the AI it said it was too, ang- too dangerous to share. February Artificial Intelligence Research Group, Open AI, announced a creation of the GPT-2, an algorithm capable of writing impressively coherent paragraphs of text. But rather than release the AI in its entirety, the team shared only a small model of, out of fear that people would use it, use the more robust tool maliciously to produce fake news articles or spam, for example. But on Tuesday, OpenAI published a blog post announcing the decision to release the algorithm in its full seeing no strong evidence of misuse so far i guess they're gonna pull if it does i mean this is probably good for bloggers who uh need to write content all the time you can get a little ai help in there you know start writing them out you you do a little bit of editing yourself to make it more your your words your brand i can see it being very useful let's see Hackers can access your Alexa by shining a laser through your window. What the hell? Countless millions of people use AI assistants such as Siri and Alexa to do everything from making purchases online to control the locks on their houses. Just say the command, the trigger, the assistant, and sound waves from your voice hit a part of your smart device microphone called a diaphragm diaphragm that causes the diaphragm to move producing electric signals that the device software can understand and respond to but according to new researchers funded in part by the u.s defense advanced research project agency cyber criminals can hack siri and alexa and the voice activated AI assistance without saying a word, they just need a line of sight to your device. The team from Japan and the University of Michigan found that a, a attacker could encode a command into the beam of light rather than speak it. When they then shine the light on the device microphone, the diaphragm moves just as if it was hit by the sound wave. Ah, so mimic sound waves. Interesting. In tests, the researchers found that they could hack Siri and other AI assistants from up to 10, up to 110 meters or 360 feet away. That was the length of the longest hallway they had access to. They are also controlled a device in one building from a bell tower 70 meters at 230 feet feet away from by shining the lights through the window so don't put your ai or your alexa in the line the side of a window if it's all possible because some fool's gonna go in there and i don't know ask siri to purchase 15 xboxes and have them come to your door and the guy comes when that guy comes he comes and picks them up you never know you don't know. You just don't know what people are capable of nowadays. Let's get into Earth sciences. All right, whales having a solution. And I'm trying to find Bill Gates founded a startup. Unveils as holy grail of solar energy. Bill Gates' backup startup called Heligen just unveiled a new technology that could help make manufacturing industrial carbon neutral. 
Halogen uses artificial intelligence algorithm to position a massive array of mirrors so that they can reduce sunlight into a single point, heating it up to a thousand degrees Celsius, according to CNN, which is about a quarter of the temperature of the surface of the sun. That's hot enough to manufacture things like steel, cement, raising the possibilities of eradicating major sources of greenhouse emissions to get those type of heats. Hmm. Well, that's good. New energy sources. Because we're paying the arm and the leg just to get energy into our house. So we need to start doing something. So, let me see. Let me see. If you want to peak mental performance, stimulants are not enough. I read this article a long time ago. Um, it's just saying you need to do some nootropics. Go to onit.com and get some alpha brain and you'll feel better. Worried about gut health? Try the world's more of advanced gut test all right recent advancements in understanding the human gut microbiome has shown the complex community of microorganisms to live in our digestive tract are linked to a all sorts of common health issues however putting a newfound knowledge to use is a lot more complicated than TV doctors and natural health bloggers would have you believe. Luckily, the folks at Von Viome have taken pretty much advanced science and made it simple with their gut intelligence test, easy to use app. Over the last 15 years, scientists have discovered that the complex community a symbiotic bacteria and other microorganisms that live in your digestive tract play a huge role in your overall health. Yes, we know this to be true now. If your gut has been jacked by antibiotics, um, trans fats, uh, sh artificial sugars, and all the stuff that makes food preserves, it destroys your gut which leads to all kinds of hor uh, inflammation in your body. And inflammation is the start of all diseases. So, Yes, yeah, so there is a app that you can chill out at V-I-O-M-E, V-I-O-M-E dot com. And for 149, you can check out your gut health. They'll do a whole, they'll do a whole setup to see what's up with you. Why are you farting? Why are you blowing chunks on the toilet? Why is there an earthquake every time you go into the bathroom? Why is it smell for two days when you lay that turd? These are all important questions, my friend. All important questions. I mean, you won't be on a date. You have to go to the restroom. You stink that thing up. Forget about it. She ain't going to be with you. After you drop a deuce that smells for a week. <laughs> There's my advice for today. Deuce her. Get a deuce. Deuce it up. I'm going to deuce up this bathroom. You just got deuced. And walk right out of there. Walk out the door. <laughs> You just got deuced. <laughs> Federal judge. It's illegal to post 3D printed gun designs online. On Tuesday, Judge Robert S. Lapskin ruled that the Trump administration June 18 decision to allow the sharing of designs of 3D printed guns online violated federal law. Some backgrounds in 2013, an activist organization called Defense Distribution posted blueprints for a functional 3D printed gun online. Obama administration 
ordered the group to take down the blueprint. In 2015, defense distributors sued government, claiming that it had a First Amendment right to share its blueprints. The Justice Department argued that doing so violated the export laws and threatened both national security and world peace. Both federal trials and appeal courts agreed. Ruling against defense, Ferguson asserted that the Trump administration couldn't just decide to contradict what the Justice Department previously argued. And the Justice Lansing agreed, called the decision to allow defense distributors to share his blueprints arbitrarily and, cap and capriciously. Given the ages of prior position regarding to the need to regulate 3D gun firearms and the CAD file used to manufacture them, he wrote, it must do more to simply announce the contradictory position. So this is not so much stopping people um, from getting 3D, pr 3D printed guns. It's just having government condone it. Um... People can pr print 3D printed guns. They just can't get the designs. If you just can't post the designs online. But I, I, I think you probably could email it or or text it. You just can't post it where everyone can see it. This is a... This is government trying to stop something that uh, is realizing that uh, there's a losing battle. 3D printed guns is going to make gun control functionally useless. We have 400 million guns in this country and we have 3D printed uh, machines. You're going to have to clamp down on your society to keep them from printing guns which is not illegal. You can make your own gun in this country. And you st and in certain parts of the country, you definitely can manufacture guns. Uh, but the idea of just stopping a design paper and, and, and thinking that would work, you know how many things are on the internet that are not supposed to be on there that are illegal, that, that, that are on there every single day? Just this idea... That if you sign the law, that something magically happens that makes everyone act good is stupid and is childish, is f is fantasy, and you need to fucking grow up because the world doesn't work that way. With 400 million guns and the ability to print guns at will from your own home if you bought a $2,000 machine, the... <sighs> Concerting guns, I said this before and I'll say it again. Concerting guns, Eden's not burning. It is burnt. Israel has armed guards at every one of their schools. And guess where there's no tax anymore? Against their kids. We live in a new world. Just like at 9-11, we had to change our ways. Our ways. In this Time and age where people are easily offended, are, are emotionally inept, who have no emotional intelligence, that they feel justified to hurt other people because their life is not going the way they feel. They think they're, they are entitled to their emotions and people need to walk on eggshells with them. Well, some of those people are going to get so offended they're going to pick up guns. This is the world we live in, and we need people who are not afraid to stand in the gap and defend our children and shoot those fuckers when they start, when they start to come in. And that's it. We live in a new world. If you, if your first instinct, when someone comes and shoot up a school, is that... Someone should write a law and not that there should be somewhere to defend my, my children. Then you are sheep, my friend. They're, you just need to grow up. Laws are there as a notification 
that if you violate that, you're going to go to jail when you're a cunt. But when someone decides to break a law, that law doesn't magically put a barrier in front of them and hold them still to stop them. Laws, safes, are to keep good people good. But the bad people who want to hurt and murder and maim, they're not going to obey these laws. They're going to find some way and somehow to do it. Just common sense. Stick your head out of the sand. All right. Now let's get into the speed round. I'm just going to read the titles and you're going to have to go back and look for them yourself. Here we go. Number one, cyber, atta- cyber attacks forces hospital to revert to handwriting. All right. Elon Musk apologized to space employees after smoking weed. Well, he should have if they lost money. Cops charge men with theft for stealing their secret GPS tracker. Hmm. Air pollution spikes in India. Bars clean, uh, sells clean oxygen. Uh, we see those in Las Vegas. Hackers are already selling stolen Disney Plus accounts. That was bound to happen. Microsoft is hiding a source code in an apocalyptic proof cave. What do they know that we don't know? Facebook shut down. P- Facebook says it has shut down f- 5.4 billion fake accounts. In 2019. That's a shitload. Watch. No, no, we're not going to do that one because that's a video. Professor claims internet access should be a human right. Pause. Probably going to have to be because if brick and motors are going away and uh, what if like grocery stores find it Inefficient and uh, not practical to have uh, a, a walk-in store. Um, if services like that happen, um, I think if people just can't get basic stuff to live on, whether they had money or whether they're homeless or whatever it is, uh, they might have to have access to the Internet. The only problem with that, the, the, the government will regulate it. If they're going to give it free to everyone, um, I'm pretty sure the speed of it will be uh, parceled off to corporations who want to sell it to people who live in a better life. Okay, take me off pause. Ultima Thrill. Google is going to start offering bank accounts. I don't know if I want to be married with Google and my money. Uh... Facebook head of news founded an anti-warrant website. Okay. Okay. Uh, cops can now get warrants from entire DNA websites. From what? Cops can now get warrants for entire what's what? With just a single warrant? Floridian detectives obtained access to a DNA profile of more than a million people. An expert says case sets a dangerous precedent. AnswerSU.com and 32 and Me are large consumer DNA sites holding genetic data on 15 million and 10 million people respectively. However, they aren't the only DNA site out there. Similar service like GED Match Currently, it has 1.3 million users, each of whom are able to search the site's entire database. May GD match change in policy so that the law enforcement officials could only search the profile of people who opt into such searches, which GED match co-founder Curtis Rogue recently told New York Time magazine about 118,000 users have done. 185,000 users don't have, have said yes for uh, cops at any time 
can look at their DNA. I don't think it was worded that way. <laughs> Who would do that? Sheep. Yeah. Why? What? Well, what's the big deal? You can have it. I'm pretty sure that these guys said, "Oh, maybe these people can look at your DNA, and there's a lot of benefits for all the people." Um, who can look at your your, your DNA, you know, all these different systems and all these different uh, uh, corporations who are doing the similar stuff, they might be able to help you in here and here. And oh yeah, the, the Department of Defense and the cops can look at it too. Great, thanks. Someone published all the membership data from a neo-Nazi website. Huh? Guess what happens? Can't be a racist and undercover. People are suddenly getting texts from last Valentine's Day. What? I don't even care to read that. Scientists, humans' extinction is extremely likely. Screw you. All right, here we go. Nope. Health and medicine. This is what we're going to do. Here's how the UK avoided a vape lung e- epidemic. Americans find itself in the midst of a vape lung epidemic, but the mysterious lung illness affecting vapors in US hasn't hit the UK nearly as hard. The difference seems to stem from the difference of how the American and British regulatory agencies, politicians have responded to the rise of e-cigarettes, according to Vice. While the UK government sees vaping as a part of a long-term plan to end smoking, Vice suggests that pro- prohibition-like policies in the US could push vapors towards sketchy products that may be causing the lung condition in the first place. So it is regulation pushing people to these shitty sources sort of like how the drugs you know buying drugs from drug dealers right it could be laced with any kind of shit that makes you addictive but if you're buying it from a corporation they're not going to do that or at least they're not i mean i mean they do that with cigarettes so maybe maybe i should reverse that but they're not going to put they're not going to lace it with pcp or cocaine at least i don't think they will but there's regulations. And I'm pretty sure. And, 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 and that's a, the fact of the matter is, uh, if marijuana, you want your marijuana laced with something else, you're going to have to lace it yourself. I don't know how I got on that subject. But um, so Vice suggested that prohibition like policies in the U.S. could push vapors towards sketchy products. And that's created a lung epidemic. Specialized CBD inflammation harnesses curcumin and anti-inflammatory benefits. Sornet-like ramen packets have every nutrient needed to survive. Let's look for that company. According to... All, all in noodles. That's where you get it. Report Monsanto pay Google to bury unfavorable news. Who is that a shocker? These high tech bed sheets use infrared lights for faster muscle recovery. And let's find the name of that place. Infrared light? No. What's the name of the country? Under Armour has created it recovery sheet seats. So, well, Under Armour has it. So go look that up. New blood tests could detect Alzheimer's 20 years before the system. Before symptoms. That's amazing. Researchers at the Washington University School of Medicine in St. Louis, Missouri, claim that they have made significant progress towards developing a test that can detect Alzheimer's up to 20 years before the symptoms appear. They hope that it will test would aid the future Doug trials by speeding up the screening process for potential client trials participation and in the process accelerating the path of treatment to alzheimer's wonderful wonderful researchers 3d printed functional component of a heart human heart 
The team of researchers from the Carnegie Mellon University 3D printed a functional component of a human heart, including small blood vessels and large beating ventricles. We are now have the ability to build and construct and recapitulate recapu key structure mechanical and biological properties of native tissues. Well, that's deep words, says Adam Fingbird, a professor at Carnegie Mellon. Yeah, we know. Fluid form, which builds the tech teams use in the statement. Printing tissue capable of functioning like a real thing in particular challenging and complex shapes have been supported as they've been printing or otherwise they begin to sag. The team solved this issue according to the paper published in the journal Science Today by printing scaffolding forms of the temporary supported gel. But the printing compound had yet to make their way into the living body. Okay, so they just made it basically what was been 3D printed before with SAG. It, it will lose its consistency, I guess, pretty quickly. But now they use a scaffolding technique and it's much stronger and they're looking to put into human bodies. Awesome. There we go. CRISPR baby scientists warned to open a designer. Chris, CRISPR babies. Scientists wanted to open a designer baby clinic. I bet they did. They want to start engineering. Let me tell you something, people. America China and Russia are already genetically enhancing their children. We're going to be behind. We're in, in, in the arms race, we're going to be behind in 100 years. Since 100 years. Well, well, I mean, we gained our military superiority and technological superiority right after World War II. So that was 1950s, right? So 75 years, we've been the top dog, top dog. And we're going to lose because we have some moral issues or some um, long waiting lines of paperwork and um, what's that word? Regulations that's keeping us from uh, genetically altering our children to be stronger, smarter, space-varying people. We're, we, Russia and China and anybody else are just throwing all those moral uh, standards away. And they're going to produce this new state of human beings that... Um, we're going to be about 10 to 15 years, maybe 20 years behind them. And uh, the American scientists want to have it now. A better human. A space-varying human. A warrior human. To fight these new battles. A smarter human to make the new discoveries. To find the new way. We need to be doing this. All right, I'm just going to read a few more here. Thousands of people are about to test an HIV vaccine. Good for them. I hope it works. Off-road. Boeing unveils a spacecraft built to carry the astronauts to ISS, the space station. Wonderful. University deletes press release claiming evidence of bugs on space. Because they didn't find any. This is why uh, people, they tend to uh, want to create something happening that is not there so they can get the funding. Now they're going to be under more scrutiny than they did before. NATO boss, space is now a military operational domain, obviously. And um, whoever gets their military up there first, 
We'll control it. NASA is testing an alien hunting submarine in the Antarctic. So they can you probably put it on Titan, which has a lot of water and it's on a, a moon in uh, Jupiter or Saturn. I'm not sure. Unusual PhD thesis lets us use bacteria to colonize Mars. Got to resist. Students have an unusual idea for transforming and colonizing Mars. Spending... Send spacecraft loaded with bacteria and let them do the bulk of the work. By sending specific microbes to Mars, Deaf University, Delft University of Technology and doctoral candidate Benjamin Lanier argued that the humans will make a journey make the journey years later will arrive in a planet full of raw materials that could be used to build sediments rather than bringing them with them. It is an unusual proposal, and University Press release reports that both NASA and ESA are interested. See, this is new type of thinking, new technology, new ways of doing things. It's the way of the future, my friends. SpaceX Starship rocket burst complete, completely <laughs> during tests. Oh, whatever. Kablooey. Shit happens. You know what? Uh, Edison failed like a thousand times. And what did he say? He he learned a thousand times. He learned 99.99 times how not to make a, a light. So watch SpaceX crew drag in fire. It's a watch SpaceX crew drag in fire. It's abort system engines. What? I don't like that one. NASA will build a beautiful spacecraft that looks like a space shuttle. Okay. China now launches more orbital rockets than any other country. We got to catch up. I don't know. Maybe. Just put it better stuff. Elon Musk tears into NASA for pricey Boeing launches. Trying to make them look stupid, so he'll use their sis he use his system. The toil casual the toll casual space tourism will take on the planet. Oh, I gotta read that such <laughs> space company trying to make off world tourism a thing would likely cause major environmental destruction in the process. That's because a single SpaceX Falcon 9 launches emits carbon dioxide 30 as 395 transistration flights. Transatlantic trans Atlantic flight. Stupid transition light. Transatlantic flight. Just read, fucker. Common Dreams report. And with SpaceX, Blue Origin, and Virgin Galactic, other planning to ramp up their space tourism efforts could become a major force of exacerbating global climate change. Uh, you ain't gonna stop us. Yeah. There's gonna be two... <laughs> There's gonna be a war over this. Where the people who believe in climate change and people who believe in advancements of space are going to be at each other's heads. And then they're going to start, uh, you know, keeping them from who has a better idea. NASA's app lets you control spacecrafts. NASA is NASA app letting you control SpaceX spacecrafts. A free app called the Rocket Science Ride to Station creates a NASA, created by NASA lets you control your very own space X crew Dragon or Boeing Starliner. It's a game that allows you to explore the basics of what it's like to run in a commercial crew mission into space. All right. That's nice. And... Watch NASA truck mounted can shoot drones into the sky. To make robots perform better, make them constantly fear death. Okay, I guess. 
want them to act like humans. China successfully tests Mars lander in a giant drop test. Good for them. Sophia, the robot, says she doesn't have sex. Confusing creators. Uh, why is that confusing? Watch a pack of MIT mini robots convert into autumn leaves. Huh. Sophia the robot tells crowd tells crowded room that she's does that it doesn't have sex. Well, there you go. It's not gonna say what you want to say. China is selling autonomous killer drones to the Middle East. What? Alien theme brothel just bought a sex robot. Dang. Behold. I don't even want to read that. Let's go to the next thing. We're almost done here, people. I'm just trying to try to run these off for you. Terraforming Mars is an is addictive board game. Lets you transform red planet. Ah, and a board game that lets you transform terraform uh the planet. Penn State SETI Center could legitimize legitimize alien research. I think it's a really legitimize, quite frankly. Professor claimed to have discovered insect life on Mars, but uh, they took that down as we read earlier. People are selling 3D virtual sex models of celebs, execs. What? I think that's good. We're getting there. <laughs> All right. What do you call it? Quick round. Done. Quick round done. Quick round done. We're done. That's it. I read too many. My mind's exploding. Um, I hope you go back and research all those. Um, I found one about cryo genesis. I want to read a little bit more because I really want to get into it because that's an advancement that has so many ramifications for the future and for the longevity of human race as well as immortality possibilities. Or the ability to live as long as you want. Uh, we're going to bring that up on the next one. So my friends, you can follow me on my Instagram, Facebook, um, YouTube, um, Twitter. Just type in James Salazar Media. I should come up. Until then, my friends. When the storm lights come against you and you find yourself on your knees, stand tall. Take a look at that storm and say what my sensei Jack Byrne always says, give me your best shot. Strike the music.